Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I uh, haven't posted a video in a while, but in case you haven't noticed, I've recently got my private pilot's license and uh, picked up a tailwheel and bought an airplane. So today we are going to go pick up my buddy Rob, who I used to serve in the Army with, and we're going to go for a flight. Brakes are on and held. Stick is in the lap. Alright, running up to 1700 RPM. Engine tip is up. Mag drop looks good. Mag drop 2 looks good. No more than 150 between both. Oil pressure is up. Check carb. Carb is good. Carb off. Check idle. Okay, idle is good. We got to set it up on 3618 over here. Make sure we're on the correct frequency, 122.8, which we are. Alright, let's make a call. McPherson traffic, Cub 953, departing runway 36 to the northeast. McPherson. Pull the power in, get the tail straight, water pilot mode engaged. Clear on the left, clear on the right still. Okay, she's centered up, here we go. Full power. And we're up. Hey, a little bit of crabbing. We'll be all right. Pitch for 60. It's gonna be squirrely on the landing, I'll tell you that. Got 11 knot wind on the runway. We're doing okay. I thought we were going to be sliding a lot more than that. Woo! All right, we're bringing up 2,500 feet. We're roughly 2,500 now. We'll extend a little bit down base, or correction, we'll extend a little off the departure end, and uh, we'll get out from underneath the town here. This is the town of McPherson off to my right, to your left on the camera, and uh, we'll just get out from underneath them and... Uh, Play. We're not over any congested areas when we turn out of the pattern. Okay, here we go. We'll make a right turn, and we'll turn towards the north. East. Oh, we're coming a little bit more east, to be quite honest, but be okay. We're at 3,000. We said uh, it is taken off. It's at 3,000. Clouds are scattered at 3,500. So we'll pull power back just a little. Keep it around 2,150. And we'll begin trimming. All right, so once we get going here, a um, little background about myself. So I spent about 10 years in the Army, and to be exact, we were at nine months, or correction, nine years, six months. Gus traffic, 654 hotel, turning right base, runway 36, touch to go, Gus to traffic. And uh, two days. And uh, after I got out, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do for a while, and uh, couldn't quite make up my mind. And I decided I want to come be a pilot. And I uh, realized that being a pilot is a little expensive sometimes. Uh, getting your pilot's license is not cheap. And then continuing it after that is also not cheap. So I started looking around like, hey, how can I, as a veteran, do this for free? There's got to be a system. There's got to be a way. And uh, what I came to find out was that if you use your, if you want to use your post 9-11 GI Bill, you can go and get your pilot's license for free. You can do your regular pilot, or your just private pilot. You can do your instrument rating. You can do your commercial. You can do anything else pretty much after that. There are some interesting ways to get it done, we'll say. And the way, the main way to do it, besides just paying for it out of your own pocket, is to go to what's called a Part 141 school. And a Part 141 school is an institution of higher learning that will accept your GI Bill that has a flight program. So, example, I went to K-State University, and specifically their Polytechnic uh, campus, where they have a flight program. And that flight program accepts the GI Bill. And when they accepted my GI Bill, that includes the opportunity to get my private pilot's license, which is how I did it. 
Um, I ended up having to go over a little bit more and redo some of the flight lessons. So ultimately I ended up only spending about two grand to get my private pilot. And the reason for that is um, the VA, or the GI Bill, same thing for this conversation, will uh, only pay for, I think it's like 42 and a half hours to get your private pilot's license. And after that, uh, they also go off of a dollar amount. So it's like $10,000 uh, or 42 and a half hours. They go off of basically what the minimum average hours time it takes for a private pilot. Um, you know, it took me more than that because I had to redo some lessons. They changed the aircraft over in the school. They wanted me to go from steam gauge to G1000s or class cockpits, which I don't mind eventually. But I was three quarters of the way through my private pilot's license and I didn't want to switch. I wanted to stay with what I had been learning. I didn't want to start all over again. Additionally, using the G1000s is more expensive excuse me, than, uh, than using the steam gauges. And so I opted to stick with the steam gauge. Now, I personally think, just my personal opinion here, that using the steam gauges is better initially for a private pilot because they get better spatial orientation than the G1000s. Also, I've noticed that in the G1000s, there's a lot to start up initially when you're learning. Eventually, it'll uh, you know it'll even itself out, and you'll be okay. It's not, not that big a deal. But Now, from that, uh, my family and I decided to pitch in. Mainly, I didn't pitch in much, but my family did. And we decided to go get an airplane. And we happened to buy 1941 Piper Cub. Now, uh, it is a little interesting, for sure, because I am flying in the wintertime of the Cub. And today's flight is a little bit longer. I think we're doing roughly about, uh, about 100 miles. I've got about 125 nautical mile range. Um, depending on how much RPM I put in and the weight in the airplane, etc. But I normally plan for about 125 nautical miles. Depending on where I go and how much gas is, it's relatively cheap to fill up. I got a 12 gallon tank. So let's say you're a young pilot, let's say you're, or you're a mom and dad or whatever, and you've got a kid that wants to go fly airplanes, and you realize that the cost of airplanes are expensive, because they, they are. <laughs> so the Piper Cub, uh, there's about 20,000 of them made from the thir basically the beginning of the 40s, uh, pretty much to the mid-50s. Uh, well, pretty much 50s. And uh, it's extremely cheap to fly, you know? Uh, if you get what's called an STC, a supplemental type certificate, you can run different types of gas in the airplane. In this case, I can run auto gas or car gas that is non-ethanol rated or has no ethanol in it. And uh, I can just go to a regular gas station and pick up gas. That saves me 3 or $4 per gallon on gasoline. So if you figure them at, you know, 3 bucks times it by 12, you know, that's not bad uh, for gasoline, you know, and I can get me you know, almost two hours of flight time. So anyway, so back to the private pilot thing. So if you're a veteran and you want to get into the private pilot realm and you want to do it for free, you have to go to an institution of higher learning that has a flight program. That is also covered by your GI Bill. Once you do that and you get through it, then you can begin to branch out with what's called VA Voc Rehab or VRE, Vocational Rehabilitation and Employment. Now, you have to have a 10% rating for that, at least. And uh, also, while you're in the 141 school, you have to maintain at least a second-class medical. Uh, the entire time I've been a pilot or a student pilot, I've been just maintaining a first-class medical. Every uh, year, I just basically go and renew my first-class medical, uh, only because I have a VA rating. And so I don't want the FAA, which has access to your medical records, to be able to say, oh, you've decreased in health or... Whatever, I try to go to a little bit of a higher standard, and I, to be quite fair, I don't quite know what the medical standards are uh, that the medical doctor is looking at in comparison to the first and the third class. There's only three levels of, of uh, medical, there's first, second, and third. Once you get your private pilot's license through the GI Bill, if you no longer want to go to college and you want to do non-traditional schooling to get your instrument and your commercial rating, then you can go and get... VRE, Vocational Rehabilitation and Employment. You basically contact the VA, VRE Services. You set up an appointment with a counselor. The counselor goes through if you're eligible for VRE. Now, the purpose of the VRE is to ensure that 
The VA is funding non-traditional schooling in order to help minimize the impact that your disabilities have on you. So, for example, let's say, let's say you can't stand uh, in one spot for very long because you're missing, I don't know, you're missing a limb or you've got some shrapnel on your leg that makes it so, you know, your legs are a little weird or, I don't know, you've got uh, crushed back or something like that because you're used to jump out of airplanes so your knees are really bad. That's where that service would come in to help you with those services. Uh, and in being a pilot, it can reduce your need to stand for a long time. You know, I will say that being a private pilot, it does certainly... Um, give you more purpose than just being, you know, not, I guess not a pilot, but, um, you know, when you become a pilot, there's a lot of things you got to learn. It's pretty much like going on a mission any time that you go. You're going to check the weather reports, how many people are going with you, what's the logistics of the flight, how far are you going, how much fuel do you have, etc. You know, there are, it's pretty much like running a convoy op all the time. And, um, I mean, I enjoy it. There are some hazards to it, you know, like right now I'm flying in the winter, and I need to make sure that there, you know, is no ice. And that's why I keep looking around on the airplane every couple of minutes. I'm just checking to make sure. Okay, we made our 10-mile call. When we get to a little bit closer, we'll go over the approach checklist, but for the most part, we're pretty much set. Make sure uh, our seatbelts are on. They pretty much are. Uh, we don't need to worry about car heat. Feels good. Trim's okay. Mags are on, obviously. Uh, yeah. We could probably start coming down a little bit. Let's double check what pattern height is in Emporia. That's probably a good idea. A pattern altitude for Emporia is 2,000 feet for a light aircraft, in which, hey, check it out, we are a light aircraft. So um, we'll start coming down a little bit. We're descending now to 2,800 and down. Emporia traffic, Cub 953, five miles for, to the west, inbound for a full stop on runway 01, Emporia. An Abilene traffic, case day 43, is turning crosswind, departing that area, last call, Abilene traffic. All right, let's get down to Patton Rath to here. Actually, let's stay up a little bit higher. We're about four, mile, four and a half miles to the west. I won't be able to see the airport because I can't quite see it yet, so it should be direct off our nose here. I think I see it. Do a little left turn, check it out. Yeah, there she is. All right, let's get a little bit more lined up with the runway. I hope the uh, runway's clear. Hope there's no snow there. Emporia traffic, Cub 953 is going to be entering into a midfield downwind for runway 01, Emporia. Uh, put carpet on here for a second, we're below 2000. All right. Ooh. I can put carpet back off. Okay, we are a beam. Well, car beat back down to 15, or er, RPM's down to 15, our car beat on. Emporia traffic, Cub 953 turning base for 01, Emporia. Emporia traffic, Cub 953 turning final for runway 1, Emporia. Car beat on. Emporia traffic, SAC 705 uniform, 8 miles inbound to the south for runway 01, straight in. Emporia traffic, Cub 953 turning base 01, Emporia. Hey, there's some deer down on the runway, how cool is that? Well, they're not on the runway, they're uh, in the field south of the runway. Emporia traffic, Cub 953 turning final on runway 01. Additionally, be advised there's a pack of six deer about a uh, thousand feet short of the runway just south of the trees. Emporia. Thanks for the heads up. Looking good, looking good.
Employee traffic, X705 uniform is inbound from the south, six miles straight in for zero one. That was a tough landing. Cut down to Port and Port Anycom, are you uh, headed to the self serve? Yeah, Roger, heading over to self serve. Cut down by three. Roger that. Okay, let's do car beat off. Uh, okay, trim is set to neutral. Okay, curve. trim is set to neutral. We're clear on the right. I know that truck went, but we're clear on the right. Clear on the left. All right, let's go self serve. Employer traffic, X705 uniform, four miles from the south, uh, straight into runway 01. Hey guys, I'm sorry about that, but that's the end of the video. During this flight, I uh, ran into some bad weather and my GoPro died, and I opted to fly the aircraft, which any pilot would say that, instead of worrying about the video equipment. So please enjoy the rest of this video, which is pretty much a power off 180 with my girlfriend and I flying in the Cub on a brisk 50 degree day in the middle of January. And uh, please follow along, like, subscribe, comment, and look out for the next video. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.